Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Z Motorsports shop and channel. I uh, appreciate uh, all the new subscribers that are tuning in and uh, I really want to thank all of my uh, other, my loyal subscribers for sticking with me. Um, I apologize, I've been really working on, this, on the video quality, sound quality in particular of the videos. Um, the, uh, I've, I've been struggling with it, trying to come up with a system or a, uh, a procedure that will work better. Uh, there, the, my first, all my first videos was just done with a little short, a little uh, point and shoot camera, utilizing the the uh, microphone in the camera. It was okay, great for close up stuff, but like this, I had to either shout or the sound just was terrible. So, um, I'm hoping the the video quality is going to go up now. Um, I tried a cordless, or excuse me, a corded lavalier that didn't work because I was tethered to the camera. Um, it was better than the other, but since then I've upgraded the cameras and I went with a better quality cord, uh, wireless lavalier system. So my last video on the deck, bearing replacement on the Toro, sound quality was much better. Uh, I've got some positive feedback on it, so I appreciate all of the, uh, everybody putting up with the sound quality. I hope going forward there's going to be more videos and I hope the content, the qual excuse me, the quality, can't, uh, can't can't say anything for the content, but at least the quality of them hopefully will be better. So thank you. Um, enough of that. It's a cold as hell February morning here in northern Utah. It's 20 some odd degrees outside. We had a hell of a snowstorm yesterday. Um, a, couple, a couple days ago I did a bearing replacement on the deck of our time cutter, Toro time cutter. Um, over the last, I've, <coughs> excuse me, I bought this back in March of 2017. And I've had a few people between the Garage Journal and even since the video yesterday, or a couple days ago, people asking me about overall, am I still happy with the machine, thoughts, opinions. So I thought maybe this morning I'd just take and go over and do a, a quick once over review of our uh, Toro time cutter. Now this is the MX series, uh, this is the MX4250, it's a 42 inch um, welded and fabricated 10 gauge deck. The, the one, this is not one you buy at the uh, big box stores. The big box stores will sell the SS series, which is kind of their more basic line, residential line. This is not what I would call, in my opinion, even though it's on the commercial line, I would probably classify the MX series as a high-end residential, maybe an entry-level commercial. That's just my opinion. Um, there's some things on the full-blown commercial units I like better, but you're gonna, you, you will pay for those. I mean, the price jumps significantly. So, um, I'm not a base model guy. In case you, anybody who's watched many of my videos knows, I don't, I don't sell for base quality of anything. Um, and I don't like buying things like this from big box stores. Um, I'm gonna do a shameless plug here. Um, and if you're in the Ogden area or Northern Utah area, A&M Outdoor Power Equipment, go in and talk to Chris. Uh, Tell him uh, Mike Zuick sent you. Um, he'll take care of you. He's a great guy. He's very knowledgeable. I've, I've known Chris for a while. I've bought a lot of parts from him over the years. Um, I, I, he treats me right and he stands behind his products. So, um, like I say, there's my little shameless plug for Chris over at AM. Um, now, a couple of differences. Uh, the, the SS series, the one you're going to find at, the, at the, the Home Depots and the Lowe's, the big boxes, they're going to have more of a stamped steel thinner gauge deck. Um, this is a, a fully welded and fabricated. It does have the rolled edges, but everything else is fabricated and welded. And I can testify, it's a heavy deck. <laughs> took me and my son to lift it up on um, the motorcycle lift when I was changing the bearings out. So uh, that or maybe I'm just getting weak in my old age, who knows. Anyway, um, there are some things I like about this, this series of mower better than the SS. Um, stupid little things like the uh, the, the positioning and the, and the feel of the hand of, of the of the sticks, the seat. Um, you know, the, the whole zero turn thing is kind of new to me. Uh, I've worked on a lot of lawn tractors over the years. My parent, my my dad owned lawn tractors because we had quite a bit of lawn there on our farm. He went through several. I've worked on a lot for not only the ones on the farm but also over the years in my uh, home business I used to have. So I'm very familiar with a lot of the lawn tractors. 
and I'm not going to lie, the zero turns is something I was not very familiar with. When I started looking at lawn tractors, um, I had my heart set on a John Deere, uh, I can't remember what series it was. I want to say it was the S series. It was, it was the ones that you actually had to, go, had to go to John Deere dealer to buy. Um, I'd driven up to Tremont and that was the closest John Deere dealer we had. Um, and then I, kept, I talked to a couple people, talked to Chris over at A&M and with my curved, um, how do you want to call them, insets in my yard where the, cur where the ornamental cur curbing is with my uh, wife's flower beds and different things. I call them rock gardens because that's all we have in there is rock. But, uh, he really said that, that something like that my property like this would really the zero turn would really shine here. Um, I've never I never even really driven one um, other than just around around you know uh, somebody's yard or something. So this was new to me. Um, I can honestly say now after not quite a year, I would highly highly recommend a zero turn for anybody who has a large property that wants to cut knock down their time and then also. Um, if they have any of those sweeping curves where a garden tractor, you're going to be doing forward and back maneuvers to get around them. The zero turns really, that, that, that's what they were designed for. That's where they really shine. Everybody says the speed is where they shine. Yeah, yeah, they're fast, but I don't mow fast. I mow to get a good, I, I watch the grass and to make sure it's, it's cutting off crisp and not laying over. And then after you draw, if you blow past it at doing, Eight miles an hour, you look back and it stands back up. I, 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 drove, I, I mow for quality, not necessarily for time. Now the reason why I went from a walk behind, 21 inch walk behind to the, the rider is because we went from a quarter acre that had very little lawn because my shop and concrete took up a lot of it to a three quarter acre property and I didn't want to spend three, four hours a time mowing lawns. So, um, my lawn mowing time stayed about the same. Takes me about an hour, hour and 15 minutes to mow our property here. Uh, a few minutes more, 15, 20 minutes if I go through and trim an edge first. I do that every other time. So uh, I usually mow twice a week. I usually, you know, I, I like my grass to stay pretty consistent. So um, all that, let's go in and talk about the machine. Um, it's a 24 and a half horsepower engine. Um, it, 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 the, the, like I say the handles are very fluid on this. Uh, I, 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 the, it's a single belt system that comes off the crank, goes around both blades. It has two um, blades on it rather than the three. That's another reason why I wanted to go to a 42 inch. I didn't really want to go any bigger than that because I wanted to be able to drive easily through my man gate on the far side of my, my house and not have to drive all the way around. And then also anything more than that just seemed a little bit much from, from my property. I, a 50 plus inch. Even a 48 is probably, 46, 48 is probably, eh, it's probably in between. I probably could have got away with it, but um, I really didn't want to get up into the five, in, into the 50 and 60 inch cuts. Um, triple blades, I wanted to kind of want to stay away from those. Um, let's see, it, it, the, seat, the seating on this is very comfortable. Uh, it has the, uh, the, the couple different versions, or uh, the, uh, uh, has a fold down armrest on it. Um, I'm a pretty good sized guy and I'm still very comfortable in the seat. Uh, it's, I mean, if I say for an hour or so at a time, it, it's comfortable. Now the new, I believe, I believe the 50 or 60 series on up, don't quote me on that, has what they call the MyRide system on the new models and it basically has two coilover shocks mounted at the rear and one up front and the whole seat and deck area rides on springs. Um, I went up and checked it out the other day and it, it's pretty impressive but it carries a pretty hefty price tag. So if you're, good mowing, if you're mowing commercially and you're doing a lot of lawns, I can probably see it. If you're mowing three, four acres, I could probably see it where you want to be comfortable. For my three quarter acre, you have even probably an acre, it's probably a bit overkill. Uh, it kind of depends on whatever your comfort level is with spending. Um, me personally, I wanted something a little bit better than the, the than the the uh, baseline residential model, <clears throat> but I probably would never spend the money to go to a, a spring righted um, deck and seat. Uh, see fuel capacity, very easy fill, three gallon about th uh, yeah three gallon capacity on this. Um, it has a sight um, over here on the side where you can see your fuel level, which is nice. Um, you know, I'm actually going to pull you around this side and show you this side and then we'll walk around the so, machine. So, again, 
easy fuel fill, um, 18 inch rear tires, 11 inch fronts, uh, I believe they're 21 inch blades, do, two blades on this model. Um, oh, important thing, cup holder, although you gotta have three hands. <laughs> um, the other thing I like about this one is it does have a uh, um, washout, deck washout. I, I only wash mine out every couple, maybe every three or four times of using it. I don't wash out every time. Um, this is just a, I just keep this in here because I've got a quick release on my garden hose and I can just snap it on, hook the hose up, wash it out, run it a little bit, and then uh, another hint, leave it outside for a little while to dry out because otherwise if you put it in your garage, you will get a pretty nasty smell as that's drying um, by morning time. So, uh, let's see, spindle mounts, cushion, it's got a, a rubber mat here on the, on the deck. It has a steel, pretty good heavy, it's probably, I'm guessing that's probably, 10, probably 12 gauge steel up front, versus a lot of the other ones I looked at were plastic. Um, I don't know if there's any problem with plastic, I just prefer steel on things. Um, seat tips up, the seat is fully adjustable, front and rear has the armrests, it tips up to expose Battery Down under the seat here. You can see there's your battery. There's your springs for your your seat um, Your part brake that actually engages and disengages as you move your handles in and out your hour meter is right over here And then there's all your other controls. There's your the yellow knob up down pull it, uh, up and down is uh, Up to engage your mower deck push down it shuts the mower deck off then you have your key then you have your throttle, and between the two is your choke. Um, 24 and a half horsepower Toro V-twin engine. Uh, it's a good engine. I have no complaints. The, uh, the dual overhead valve. Uh, V-twin intake, which I kind of like. So each intake for the, for the V-engine, each intake has its own runner. The feature on this is the quick change you can pull your air cleaner out very quickly, blow it out, clean it out, um, and reinstall it. Uh, let's see, spark plugs, easy to get to. That's your, that's your fuel line there, spark plug over here, easy to get to. Spark plug there, easy to get to. Here you have your oil fill and you also your dipstick. Right here, it's maybe hard to see in the camera here, but right here is your spin on oil filter. And here is your oil drain. Now the oil drain on this is pretty, I don't mind a, a bolt with a, an O-ring and or a gasket, but generally you have to replace that O-ring and gasket quite frequently. What Toro did on this one was you actually pull the hose down off of there and it's, it's on there pretty good. It's not gonna fall off. And then as you tip this down and out of these, out of these, cha these two channels that you have to f snake the hose out of and tip it down, that's your oil drain. So basically no tools required to change, to drain your oil on this. And then when you're done, you snake it back around the two uh, little channels there. Make sure you put it back up inside and everything snaps back in and boom, you're done, ready to go. Um, recommend changing the oil about five hours uh, on a new engine and then every 50 hours after that. I've changed mine at probably four hours, three, four hours on it and it's 18.7, I just did it again. Very premature, I know, but um, I, feel, I feel the first oil change or two is the most critical and then after that I'll probably go maybe even every other season, which is still only gonna be probably 20 to 25 hours tops. So um, it, does, it does come with a hitch here on the rear. I took it off mainly because I don't tow anything. I did tow around some chain link when I was putting my yard in just to kind of, with a, with a railroad tie, just to kind of smooth out my yard right before I put my sprinkler system and my sod in after I did all the, land, after I did all the leveling. But after that, I took, the, took it off mainly because when I'm backing around, when I'm turning around, that stuck out about three, three and a quarter inches. And I really didn't want it cutting into my fence back it into the stucco on my house, anything like that. So I took it off, it's four bolts and it's off, no big deal. Just on the other side of this shield is your muffler, um, very well secured. Also, 
This has the upgraded hydrostatic drives on it, whereas the residential one, the SS series, has the standard hydrostatic drives. These are the ZT2200 series. They're a little bit larger, have a little bit larger output shaft. You need to push it around um, or, or, or around, the, around the shop or anything, you don't want to start it, or you got the battery out, whatever. Right down here on each side, there's a little lever. You can kind of see it. Basically, you pull out and lock it, and it disengages your hydrostatic drives from the uh, output shafts. So then you can free, freewheel it around the shop or the garage or whatever. Um, that is a, kind of a neat feature, and they're easy, and they're 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 easily accessible. This side's a little less glamorous than the other side, I guess. I don't know depends on how you how you determine glamorous. Um, I guess your controls are on this side, just your just a smooth cover here, not no no drink holder. Drink holders on the other side. Um, on this, the other nice thing I like about the MX, and this is used, this is more because of the fabricated deck because of the weight of it. It comes with a foot assist. So when you're setting your deck height, you can actually, let me just demonstrate it. You can actually push to raise the deck up and then move and decide what, you know, whatever height you want it at. If you do it, you, you can do it just by the lever. You, you can tell the distinct weight of that deck. So they put a foot, in, and, it's, and it's a nice, it's quarter inch steel plate with 10 gauge stamped steel um, foot plate, hinged, it's got good half inch rod with uh, cutter pins, and it's a, it's a it, I mean, it, there's no, when you push on it, it's definitive, it's, it's, it's uh, po a positive movement, you don't, you don't feel any flex or anything like that, so you can set it at your desired height pretty easily, and then pull it in. Um, Put your handles in and you're ready to rock and roll. All right, so while we're talking about the deck here, I mentioned that it's, it's a 10 gauge fabricated 42 um, <clears throat> inch cut. It basically has two 21 inch blades. Um, they, they, you really don't want to go much more than that because at, at, at that, I think you're, you're already talking surface feet per minute around 18, 18,000 surface feet per minute or right shortly under that, or right, right under that. So much larger blades than that, and you're, you're getting up there on tip speed. So that's why a lot of the manufacturers, when they start going bigger than that, they'll go to a three-blade system. Um, I'm not opposed to the three-blade. I think it's just probably, number one, it's more moving parts than you really need. Um, so, so you go to 42, now you go to a 40, say, a, I think 48, it's either 46 or 40, I think it's 48 inches where they go, 40, no, I think it is 46 inches, next one up, 46 inches where they go to a three blade, and I believe they're like an 18 inch blade, and it's a deeper deck this way to, to, to stagger the blades in, um, but I, I prefer the, the, the twin, just because like I say, less moving parts, less belt train, the downside to that is, is you have a heavier load on this right spindle, because the discharge is on the right, so the, le the, the way they, the way they uh, shoot their grass is from left to right to come out the discharge. So the grass the blade is cutting on the left side is thrown over to the right, so the right's cutting its grass plus handling the load of that grass coming in from the left side before it goes out the discharge. So that's what was odd about the, the, bearing, the spindle bearing failure on this on the left side is because generally the right side goes first on most all your, 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 guard, your lawn and garden tractors. On the, on the mower decks. It's almost always that right side that fails first because it's got, it takes the most abuse, has the most load uh, imposed upon it. Now, I, uh, that being said, I don't have a side discharge on this. I don't have a bagging system on this. <clears throat> I run the mulching kit. Um, I, I bought it at the time I bought the mower and it's, it's the same 10 gauge welded steel um, plus the internal baffles and everything inside that are steel. It's really a good system. Um, it's, it's well built. I, I, again, I don't bag or discharge. I just go ahead and mulch. That's why I mow multiple times to keep the clippings as small as possible. While we're talking about um, appearance and, and, and decks, there's also an accessory on these that you can put on. It's called a striping kit. And basically what it is, it's a series, of, it's a set of rollers that drags along. And as you're, as you're mowing, it's laying that grass over and putting those stripes like you see in uh, um, your uh, baseball diamonds and so forth in the outfield. So that's a that's that's a an option for these. It's uh, I'm anal, but I'm not quite that anal. So I doubt I'll go through that hassle. But I I do like the way this deck 
lifts up the, the, the vacuum of it, lifts up the grass and cuts it off well and, and, and mulches it very fine. Um, so I, I, I am happy with the performance of this. Every once in a while, if it gets away from it, if we go on vacation or something, I come back and it's gone a week plus, um, I'll actually have to mow it twice because if I mow it once at three inches, it, le it, it will leave um, some little fine edges along the, uh, or some little uh, kerfs that will have to go along with the leaf blower and disperse the grass. So I'll usually run around at a higher setting and then a lower setting when we've been <coughs> downtown or something. All right, so let's talk driving experience on a zero turn versus a riding tractor. Riding tractors, just like driving a tractor or a car. It's got a steering wheel, it has foot pedals. Um, usually a gear shifter, whether it be gears or a hydro hydrostatic drive, um, pretty self-explanatory. Zero turn <clears throat> is where you're using the joysticks to control fluid to hydraulically driven motors off of a gas driven engine. So in a nutshell, that's basically what you're doing. Um, it can be a little intimidating to drive one of these for the first time. Trust me, it was, there's definitely a learning curve. Um, when you put the levers together um, and you start and you try to negotiate a turn, you're going to, you know, accelerate the outside, decelerate the inside, and that's how you're going to negotiate the turn. Now you get to the end of a of a um, uh, a line and you want to do a 180. You can now these are turf tires. They're not. There's not a real aggressive tread, but they're not smooth either. So they will if you if you grab that one lever forward and the other lever back. So you do it the hardest turn you can make, you will tear up your grass. Um, the front tires are ribbed, not smooth. There's different schools of thought there, but they can, as that drags around, as it pivots around on those casters, they, they're going to roll regardless which direction they're pointed, so there's not really a big concern there. Um, but the rear ones will tear up your sod your, if, if, you, if you get too aggressive. So usually if I'm going to the end, I will go to the end and kind of swing to the outside and make a little bit longer sweeping turn or sometimes do up and do a three point. I know that's not the way a ZTR is designed to be used. A ZTR, is a zero turn rider, is designed to be used to be up to go whoop, 180 and back. But I don't want to tear up my grass and I don't like seeing those twist marks at the end of each of my rows. Um, I change up my mowing patterns from angles to straights depending on the day of the week, depending on if we have something coming up for the weekend, we want to show our yard off, I'll make sure and put an angle. I mean, there's little different things and maybe it's being a little anal or whatever you want to call it, but I don't like tearing up the corners of my grass. So I didn't buy the zero turn to be able to buzz down, do a 180 and come back in record, in record time. So I will go up and generally do a wide sweeping curve and to eliminate, and then, and then the very last, I'll go around the outside perimeter one last time and to kind of help fluff that grass up and clean up those turn marks um, around the lawn. Now, this, these are very positive. By what I mean by that is when you push them, they, they, they go. Long sweeping curve around a sidewalk or a, uh, oh, a flower bed or something like that. If you're trying to move both sticks, you'll get this this darting feeling and unfortunately you will see it in the lawn you'll see those the, the, that darting back and forth especially um, on my long straight lines in my backyard if we're sitting up on the deck I can look out there and see those lines and I can see where I was either my train of thought or my mind drifted or whatever and I got too aggressive on the sticks and tried to bring it back and I, I end up getting a jog out there a little trick I've found and it works really well is when you're mowing on the uh, long sweeping curve. Now granted, not on, not on your curves or on your turns. On your turns, you're going to be using both sticks. Um, on your long sweeping turns, I've found, and I'm left-handed, I don't know if that makes any difference or not, but I've found that once I get my speed determined by going, you know, wherever I'm going to place my sticks, wherever I'm going to hold that, I will kind of just rest my left leg against the left stick and on those long sweeping curves, then I will actually control the rate of curve and my straightness with just my, one, with just my right stick. So if I'm starting to drift off to the right a little bit, I'll just push that right stick forward a little bit and it gradually brings it in. If you push it and then pull the other one back, 
you're going to get this dart. So I generally, once I set my speed, like I said, I'll just leave my, my, my hand, rest my hand, and less rest my leg against it so it kind of holds it into position. And I'll pretty much do everything with the one stick. And it's much more fluid. It's not as darty or as, or, or as um, aggressive of a, of, a, of a correction, if you will. So that's, that's how I, especially on those, those long curves, you can, you can put that, that front, right, or front left caster just on the grass side of the concrete and when I first was learning, the, the, the front caster would go up on the concrete, off on the grass, up on the con just because those small movements, those small corrections would dart that front end up and uh, you know, that, that drastically that it would go up and back off the concrete. So by resting that and just using the right stick to control going around that, I can keep, the, basically I can keep that, top, that left front caster wheel now just, just grazing, just skimming along the inside of the concrete which puts my deck right over the concrete and gets a nice clean edge as you're going around there and I just control it. If it starts getting a little too wet or if I start feeling, tire, feeling the tire rub against the concrete, I back it off a little bit and pull the pressure away a little bit. It's, it's, very, easy to, it's very easy to learn and I've found that with my limited experience on a zero turn, that was the, the quickest way for me to learn how to navigate the controls in a nice fluid manner to where it replicated out in the lines on the lawn. So I hope all that makes sense. Um, one other thing while, while we're here at this front view, down here, I forgot to mention this, this is what they call the, the smart speed control system. And it has three settings. It has mo, toe, and trim. So up on the very top setting, which is gonna be your trim, that limits your speed, and, and all this is, consider all of these um, handles as a percentage, if you will, of what that control lever is in. Um, kind of like on a pedal on a TIG welder, you set your current at 100 um, amps, and when you mash the pedal all the way down, you're going to get 100 amps. If you set it at 50 amps, you mash the pedal all the way down, you're going to get 100% of that 50 amps. So think of this kind of the same way. When you set this on trim, I think it, lim it, it cuts a, lim limits it back to, I believe, four, four miles per hour. So when these sticks are all the way forward, that's the most you're going to get is four miles per hour. So you're going to have a little bit more uh, control for, for short, short movements, it's gonna be a little more forgiving. Um, I actually found that when I was first, first learning, I was either in trim or toe for the first little bit in order to get a feel for it because it wasn't so aggressive as far as speed and correction wise. The next setting is toe. You put it on toe and it, 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 it directs a little more fluid through your, through your uh, hydrostatics and less slippage, so you generate less heat. The heat is what kills those hydrostatics. So by putting it, these really aren't designed to tow like a garden tractor is, but they found people were still towing things with them. And so they put the tow feature on these Toros for that fact is it directs the fluid through the hydrostatics to create less heat. And I believe it puts you about five and a half miles per hour. And um, same thing with your sticks are all the way forward. And then lastly, you have the mow mode which I believe on this model, it's either seven or eight miles per hour maximum speed is when the sticks are all the way forward. So I forgot to mention that earlier. You have three, three modes and they're, they're a percentage of where your handles are or, or what your capacity is for that position based on where your handles are at. Um, ha as far as handles go, you got nice three quarter square solid stock coming up off the controls. They're not flimsy by any means. They're good, they're solid. They have some height adjustment here. Um, there's two bolts, so you have three holes, so you have you know, three different positions, or excuse me, two, two different positions you can put these in. And, or I guess you could even probably just go one hole and move it up, but you're gonna lose some, uh, uh, some uh, holding force with just one bolt on there. Um, I'm, my, my, I've got a kind of a longer torso than legs, but my legs will come up right up underneath. I'm in the highest setting. So if you've got really long legs, you might be bumping up against those, even if your legs stretched out. I'm 6'2". My son's 6'4", 
five probably, at least six four, and he sits on it fine in that setting, but he's got longer legs and shorter torso than I've got. Um, the handle over here on the side's got a nice comfort, all, all these have got nice comfort grip um, on, on, the, on the hand, on the, on the sticks as well as the, the deck height adjustment. It's a nice quarter inch plate that goes, that's cut back and nice big deep notches that each sets into. You can adjust it from a range of one and a half up to four and a half inches on height. I generally mow mine, like I said, I usually mow mine twice a week and I keep it at about three inches. Um, and that seems to be where it stays the greenest, looks well cared for. Um, I, try, I started off, I, I mowed it at two and a half one, a couple of times. Um, it was a little too short. I made the mistake on one section last year and I thought I had it in the two and a half and I had it on the two. And I thought, I think I, think I scalped a, uh, a section of my lawn before I realized it. So um, three on mine is where I usually seem to keep it. Um, I'm not a big fan of keeping them too short, but I don't like them too long. Uh, they put a good quality belt on this right from the factory. So I've got to commend them on that. Uh, let's see. All the pivot points and everything on this are all steel. There's no, there's no nylon or plastic or anything any, in any of them. Uh, the deck removal, I demonstrated removing the deck on the other video I did where I replaced the bearings on the spindle, but I'll just quickly go over it. There's a pin down underneath. You pull a hitch pin out, a washer, and then this front rod slips out of a hole. That lowers, actually you want to lower your deck all the way down to the ground first, then pull that out. Then on the back of the deck, there's two hooks situated, and then the rod that goes across that's hooked to your deck height lever, that rod fits into those two grooves. So you'll want to take the left side first, pick it up and back and basically you're just picking that hook up off of that rod, slide it to the back so you, the deck is kind of canted underneath or at an angle underneath the mower. Then go around to the right side, pick it up and move it off, slide the whole deck assembly back, just a few inches is all it's needed, back to, you don't need to go all the way back to your tires. Then reach around back to the crankshaft, take the belt off, make sure your lever is in the all the way up position to get that rod up out of the way and the deck slides right out from underneath. You can then flip it over, clean it, do whatever you need to do. When you go to put it back under, just the reverse order of that. One thing, one thing to keep in mind, when you put it back under, try to get it centered underneath there, take this left side <coughs> and shift it rearward so that the deck is under an angle. There's a, the, next to that, where that rod is, that has to hook into that, that deck, there's a plate that comes down from that rod. And that's actually what pulls that rod up and down. That has to fit into a little void in the idler pulley. So if it's too far off to the side, it's gonna hit the side of the pulley. And as you go to lift up and down, you're basically just gonna chase that rod up and down. You're not gonna actually hook that deck onto the rod. So by keeping that in the void of that idler pulley, it allows the deck to go up and over that rod as it's on an angle. Once you get the right side on, go ahead and move the left side forward, raise it up, hook it on, and then go ahead and hook your front up and you're done. Pretty simple. Uh, let's see. What am I missing? I think that's pretty much it on the, on the mower itself. Uh, let's walk over to the bench. I got a couple things I want to show you here at the bench real quick. And I think that's pretty much wraps this up. All right, a couple things I wanted to show you here at the bench. <clears throat> now, here's your, just your time, your Toro um, brochure. I do a lot of, I do a lot of research when I'm forever, before I buy anything. Probably a little too much research according to my wife, but I, I do, I research things quite a bit. Um, so I had multiple flyers from different brands, different things I was looking at. Um, so I just kept the flyer with my paperwork. Here's the owner's manual that comes with the uh, machine. Um, has a lot of actually pretty decent, as far as owner's manuals go, this one has, actually has some pretty decent um, instru or, uh, uh, items in it. I, use, I, I always write where I purchased it from, the date I purchased it from. I keep all my receipts and everything. And then inside I keep 
at, at so many hours what I did or you know my repair history whatever um, when I go to sell something I don't sell stuff very often but when I do go to sell something people sometimes are actually want to see what's been done to the piece of equipment um, inside of that you have all your general warranties and so forth all that happy horse shit that you know they need to put in there um, especially for California proposition 65 warning all the uh, you know emissions crap then you have your contents this actually does have a little bit of general safety or general uh, like operating on a slope and so forth the thing that I wanted to point out on this is back to about I think it's about tw page 25 is where your <clears throat> is where your maintenance schedule starts if I can turn it yeah page 25 is just your recommended service intervals um, again, it says after the first five hours, change your engine oil. I generally adhere to that. And then after that, um, every, uh, I believe every 100 hours is what they call for. Yeah, I thought it was 50, but it looks like it's every 100. Um, I generally, I, I don't know. That would that, take me four or five years to put that kind of hours on probably. At least, at least four years. So I don't know that I'd go that long. Um, one thing you want to look at is the oil um, recommendations. Some people like synthetics. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer in synthetics. They have their place. On, on outdoor, outdoor power equipment, small engines, stuff like that, I generally just run a regular petroleum-based oil. Um, you're going to find in here that the uh, oil recommendation for the uh, Toro is an SF, SG, SH, or SJ API, American Petroleum Institute rating. <clears throat> Any, anything that fought, fits that category or is higher if it's higher, it covers all those ones below it. You're going to be good to go. I just run a regular 30 weight that covers most of your temperatures range from 32 degrees to 95 degrees, right in that range. Uh, just a regular straight weight 30. This is a Napa premium oil. It's actually made by, um, developed, or it's distributed but through Napa, made by Valvoline. They just put the different, they don't have all the same color additives in Valvoline. So basically it's Valvoline oil. Um, this is an S, uh, API rating of SN, um, Sam Nancy. So that pretty much covers everything below it. So this is a good oil. That's what I've been running. Um, now let's talk filters. Here's, I, I like to keep a spare oil filter and air filter on hand for my equipment, for my vehicles at all times. This particular, I have not been able to source an air filter aftermarket. Um, this air filter is from Toro, and then you're going to pay around $18 or so for this air filter. Um, oil filter is where I kind of have a little bit of a pro an issue. This is just a, a Toro or, or, uh, oil filter. No other markings on it, nowhere. Um, the uh, part number, if you look it up, it's hard to find. It's a Toro part number. But this is a $16 oil filter, which in my opinion is a little bit crazy for an oil filter. I measured it, did some... Uh, research on it and it looks like it's just a standard same one that Briggs and um, uh, I think Kawasaki some of the other after or the other small engines small small engine manufacturers use and it's just a uh, what is it a, a, I think they, they use a Fram number and I'm not a Fram fan at all but you can at least use that number to cross it over it's like a PH 40 967 I believe it is and it switches over to a Wix 51394 or a Napa Gold, which is basically a fixed Wix filter, 1394. So that's what I've been running. Um, this is about a six dollar, depending on walk in price, is like eight dollars. I think my price on this is like 570 something. So over ten dollar difference in oil filters from Toro to the to the, the, the Napa Gold. So that's what I've been running. Um, again, I just thought it worth mentioning that because. Uh, to save you some money. You don't need to go down to the Toro dealer all the time and buy all the Toro parts. <clears throat> you can if you want to. If you take, if you want to take it to your Toro dealer and have them service it, you can do that. The important th thing is is change the oil and oil filter and check your air filter. The air filter on this is very easy um, to change and even pull out and blow it out and clean it out and reuse it. Um, you know, it's pretty simple. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is tire pressures. Um, the rear, they have a spec in the book for it. It's 13 psi. I, I'm a little bigger guy. I like. I probably. I usually set mine at about 15. The fronts, there's no specs in the book, but on the tire, they have max pressure of 22. 
I generally run 20 in the front, 15s in the 15 psi in the rear. It's important you keep an eye on those air pressures because if one side goes lower than the other, you will cut an angle in your lawn. And so if you're going, you, you, you'll you'll have a, a raised edge from going one pass to the other as those opposite sides. So you want to make sure you do maintain your tire pressures on that. Um, as far as uh, the rest of the maintenance, it's pretty straightforward. Nothing, uh, nothing really jumps out at you. I just thought I'd share the information with the oil and oil filter. Do with that what you will, whether you want to continue using Toro stuff or you want to save a few bucks on oil and filter and buy it good out quality aftermarket. Um, it's at least OEM um, spec or better. So, and the price is definitely more attractive. So, all right. Well, that pretty much concludes the uh, <clears throat> little review I did here on the uh, Toro Time Cutter MX4250. Um, final thoughts: It's a great mower. Uh, I do. I, I only have tw less than 20 hours on it. Would I purchase it again? Absolutely. Um, I did have a bury a spindle failure on the uh, left spindle on the deck. I just replaced that. Um, I do, I've, I've got another video on that. I'll actually put a link in the description for anybody who wants to check that out. It's a pretty straightforward job. Pretty easy to do. Bearings are pretty cheap. Um, that being said. <sighs> I think it was a fluke. I, 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 know, I know there's mowers out there with 250 to 300 plus hours on those spindle bearings without problems. I think mine was a fluke that it failed so, so prematurely. That still wouldn't deter me from purchasing this. Even though upon further investigation, the, the mower is still under warranty. I could have taken it back to Chris. He would have replaced them and, and been on my way. I don't... I, I don't buy things for a warranty per se. I don't. I don't. I, I'd rather do stuff myself. But it's nice to, again, if, if, if it gives people that warm and fuzzies. These do have a three-year warranty on them, um, unlimited hours, I believe it is, but three years. I thought it was only six months, but I, upon further investigation, found out it's three years. Um, I'd still buy it again, even with that bearing failure. I think it was a fluke. The way the the way the mower performs. And uh, the results I get, I, I, I would buy it again in a heartbeat. So it's, it, again, it's a little higher price tag than the SS series that you're going to find in the big box stores. But I think you get a better quality and something that's going to last longer uh, for, the average, for the average guy who takes care of it. I, I, I wanted this to be my first rider and probably last, or first, excuse me, zero turn. So I wanted this to be my first and hopefully my last. My walk behind Toro, or no, no, a Snapper, my 21 inch walk behind is 27 years old this year and it's still running strong, original engine. I've done valve guide seals on it a couple of times, but the, the point is I keep the oil changed, I keep the blade sharpened and balanced. Um, I, I fix little things when they come up and there's, that has been a very low cost of ownership machine over the years. I don't expect anything different with this. Um, the, the first feelings I get and everything with it, it really is a good quality machine and I think long term it's going to be a, a good quality machine that's going to last through the years. Uh, a couple things I just want to point out, make sure you change your oil, make sure you check your oil, make sure you clean your air filter. Um, you don't need to be as anal as I am as far as keeping it clean and, and whatnot. I, I'll mow my lawn. And I'll let it sit for a few minutes and uh, goes around and blow my walks off. And then I pull up right outside my shop. I have an air, an air blower just inside my shop door. I come out and I blow it off. I reach up underneath the deck. I try to blow as much as I can out. Um, then I flip the seat forward. I blow all the underneath out. I get under and I blow around the pulleys. Um, I blow around the cooling fins and everything on the engine. I, I, I blow it all out. Every couple of, oh, probably every half a dozen mows, something like that, maybe maybe a little more than that, maybe eight or ten. I'll pull the air filter and blow it out and, and, and cup the air, air intakes and blow off back through the blower housing to blow things back out of the blower or out of the cooling fins, put the air filter back in. I check the oil uh, on it regularly. I check my air pressures regularly. I did have a tire uh, right front and a left rear that goes go uh, flat on me once in a while. I pulled those apart, fixed them. Um, 
I had go ahead thorns in my yard before I uh, put my sod down that I was fighting with and trying to kill. And I think a couple of them got away and got it, found their way into my tires. So uh, the other two are holding up good. Um, again, it's, it's a great mower. I highly recommend it. And uh, the big thing is, is just keep them, keep them maintained. But that's with anything. Keep everything you know maintained. You, you know, we put a large investment. We, we outlay a lot of cash for our uh, assets as, to, as homeowners to, main, to maintain our properties and so forth. It, it behooves us to, to maintain those pieces of equipment. So hopefully that's what some of these videos are, are, are doing is helping people uh, maintain their equipment. At least maybe, maybe give people an idea of what it takes. It's not a lot. It doesn't take a lot. Um, but we just, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we... Uh, uh, maintain our, our vehicles, our, our assets as the best we can um, so we're not wasting money year after year. So, um, uh, okay, I think that pretty much wraps it up. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'll try to answer them the best I can. Uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If there's anything else you'd like to see, please let me know. Um, if the sound quality and the video quality is better, please let me know that too. I really, I really appreciate the feedback. Um, if there's anything you want to see around the shop, around the yard, or vehicles, RV, anything like that, let me know. I'll be more than happy to try to uh, do a video on it. Um, now that I think I've got my, my, my sound and uh, video quality worked out, I want to do more of these videos for, for you guys. So uh, I, I appreciate the, the feedback. Um, that's one of the reasons why I did the review on this uh, Toro is because between the private messages and the comments I got on Garage Journal and, and, and the videos and through emails, um, people have asked me my opinion and whatnot, and I just thought I'd hurry and do a quick um, review on it. So um, that being said, thank you very much, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.